You should have brought more. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Resident Evil movies and shows. That won't change anything! I will open their eyes for true terror! For this list, we'll be looking at the most disappointing entries in the Resident Evil filmography. Did these movies and shows measure up to your expectations? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Resident Evil The first Resident Evil movie is arguably the best. It's certainly the scariest, as it places an emphasis on fear and tension instead of over-the-top action. It's a guilty pleasure for many, and it contains some iconic sequences. Laser hallway, anyone? But it still has its problems. It's a little cheesy, containing bad dialogue, poor acting, and some embarrassing CGI. It also shares little in common with the game, which tended to disappoint some viewers. This is where they kept the T-Virus. Of course, this would become an even bigger problem as the series progressed. For what it is, Resident Evil is decent fun, and it makes for a relatively solid video game movie. <laughs> Number 9. Resident Evil The Final Chapter The Resident Evil franchise is quite unique, as the first and last entries are the strongest. They certainly make for solid bookends. The final chapter contains some impressive visual effects, and returning to the hive was a ton of fun. It also closes out the overarching storyline in satisfying fashion. However, we were shocked at the inclusion of Jill, Leon, and Ada, who made for great additions in the middle chapters. What are you saying? Watch your back. The film also takes itself a little too seriously, and the rapid fire editing is enough to give viewers a serious headache. While its flaws were many, the final chapter is at least a somewhat satisfying conclusion. I made you. Yeah. Big mistake. Number 8 Biohazard 4D Executor. This is perhaps the most unique entry in the Resident Evil filmography. It runs just 20 minutes and was mostly shown at theme park movie theatres. However, it also debuted at the Tokyo International Fantastic Film Festival. Furthermore, the movie can also be viewed in special chairs that offer an immersive 4D experience, hence the name. Unfortunately, the short film isn't great, and it relies almost entirely on the 4D experience. The dated animation is quite shoddy, and the story is almost non-existent. It also offers nothing interesting in terms of series lore. It's a decent way to pass 20 minutes at a theme park, but it certainly doesn't hold up on its own terms. <laughs> Number 7. Resident Evil Infinite Darkness Released on Netflix in the summer of 2021, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is a CGI anime starring franchise legends Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. Look, I gotta go. Don't do anything stupid. There's not much to the series, as it only consists of four episodes running about half an hour each. It's over before you know it, and it will leave you asking, is that it? Yes, sadly, that is it. The story is not only badly paced and derivative, but rather pointless as well. Damn it. it also feels quite cheap, with some low quality voice acting and flawed animation. And yes, the horrible writing that made Resident Evil so famous is certainly present and accounted for. It was fun seeing Netflix delve into the popular franchise, but this ain't it. Rest in peace, assholes. Number 6. Resident Evil Vendetta Following both Degeneration and Damnation, Vendetta was an enormous disappointment. This is the third CG Resident Evil film, with the main characters being Leon, Chris Redfield, and Rebecca Chambers. What are you talking about? You're acting like a couple of selfish brats right now. This movie feels even cheaper than Infinite Darkness, which is a shame considering the quality of its predecessors. The writing is typically terrible, and the voice acting is questionable at best. 
Then again, even the most talented actors in the world couldn't make this dialogue sound good. Bastard. The animation is nice though, but it's let down by an inconsequential story that is completely forgettable and filled with boring characters and cliché tropes. Talk about a bummer. Leon. Sorry I'm late. Gotta take the stairs. Number 5. Resident Evil – Welcome to Raccoon City This reboot offered a lot. All the fan favourite characters are here, and its story was far more in keeping with the game than Paul W.S. Anderson's franchise. The police station, the mansion, even great nods to the original game, like the zombie slowly turning its head to reveal its grotesque face. Show me your hands! This should have been a fan's dream come true, but it really wasn't. They ruined everything that is beloved about the games, including the characterizations and stories. Now, you know what? I owe this town, I owe Birkin and Umbrella everything. The film is also horribly paced, with excessive downtime and some sloppy editing between storylines. It's just a mess of a movie that fails to take advantage of the classic source material. It's just Number 4. Resident Evil Extinction This is when Anderson's series really started to take on a life of its own. While the first two movies bore at least a passing resemblance to the source material, Extinction took the story to a whole new direction. Sorry about this, Stevie. The desert visuals and action sequences are admittedly first rate, but the movie seriously falters when characters aren't shooting zombies. This is when the silly plot really starts to unravel, and it heralds even worse things to come from the waning franchise. <laughs> Nothing makes sense, and it seems like everything is in the service of the increasingly mindless action. Extinction is a little better than its predecessor, but then again, that's not a very high bar. She really is magnificent. Number 3. Resident Evil Apocalypse The second entry in Anderson's series takes much of its inspiration from the second and third Resident Evil games, with the fearsome nemesis making his screen debut. There are some things to like here. The scope is admirable, with a zombie war raging in the streets of Raccoon City. The nemesis is also quite effective. However, the movie's potential was let down by some third-rate filmmaking. The action sequences are poorly filmed and not especially creative. The writing and acting are also underwhelming, and even great actors like Jared Harris were wasted on paper-thin characters. Where do we have to go? The helicopter will be at City Hall. I suggest you make haste. Apocalypse looks like a cheap Uwe Ball film and some regard it as one of the worst video game movies of all time. Hold it. What do you think you're doing? Number 2. Resident Evil Retribution About the only thing going for this movie are the action sequences. Even when the franchise was at an all-time low, Paul W.S. Anderson knew how to entertain. By this point, all semblance of realism and logic has been thrown out the window. As a result, Retribution is a very messy movie, and none of it makes much sense. Only the two of you. It'll be enough. And while the action is admittedly entertaining, the series had completely abandoned its horror roots in favour of outrageous science fiction shenanigans. By this point, you had either abandoned the franchise entirely, or you were fully on board with the craziness. This is Umbrella's greatest creation, the belly of the beast. So why don't we just get the hell out of here? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Resident Evil Afterlife even the bottom-tier Resident Evil movies have some things going for them. Afterlife has very few, if any. This was certainly a franchise low point, and it contains far too many flaws that can't easily be ignored. Yeah, we were getting in there. 
The action is badly staged, containing an abundance of slow motion and some bewildering editing. The 3D was unimpressive and did nothing to enhance the movie-going experience. The writing and acting were very tacky, with Sean Roberts' Albert Wesker earning particular ire from the fanbase. I'm what you used to be. Only better. Finally, the story went completely off the rails and descended into baffling senselessness. Claire and Chris Redfield are here, but this is not Resident Evil. It's something else entirely. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.